Okay, well, I'd like to talk with you all now about um, the day that I got free food. So, um, and this is not the time that it was my freshman year and I walked outside and Mose was parked outside of Landis Hall, even though that was pretty legendary. Um, this particular time, I was shadowing a geriatrician. His name is Dr. Cassian. And we had been at a rehabilitation hospital all morning and he suggested around lunchtime that we go down to the hospital cafeteria and get some food. And so, of course, I agreed. Um, so we went down and loaded up our trays, and as we were approaching the register, I reached into my wallet to get some money to pay, and he stopped me, and he said, no, it's okay, Shalom, I'll cover your meal today. And I was shocked, and I said, no, it's okay, Dr. Cassian, don't worry about it. But he insisted, he was very firm, and so um, I thanked him profusely, and we sat down and had an amazing conversation over lunch that day, and he poured so much into my life. Um, and right before we stood up to leave, he said, let me tell you a story. He said, when I was a student, just like you, I shadowed a physician, and he took me out to lunch, and he paid for my lunch as well. And he poured so much into my life, and he gave me so much advice and encouragement, and he really helped cement my commitment to this profession of medicine. But before we left, he told me, Cassian, I have every confidence that you're going to be a physician one day. And I know that when that happens, a student is gonna come to you and ask for the same opportunity that I have given you here today. And so all I ask is that when that happens, you agree, you take them out to lunch, and you pay for it. And so Dr. Kassian looked at me that day and he said, now I'm passing the baton on to you. I know that you're going to be an incredible physician one day and all of your dreams are going to come true. And I know that when that happens, a student's gonna to come to you asking for this same opportunity. And then when that happens, I would like for you to agree. I would like for you to take them out to lunch and I want you to pay for it. Now, Dr. Kassian was not the first example of a spirit of mentorship that had been exemplified in my life, but he was perhaps the first instance in which its true value hit home. Here was a man, the physician he had shadowed all of those years ago, who had decided to shape his legacy by a consistent policy of reaching back and pulling forward all of those who were following in his footsteps. And that simple decision is going to impact so many lives into the future. And suddenly, I had an incredible vision of what I wanted my own future and legacy to look like. And so today, I'd like to talk about how I believe society's definition of success has failed us. Standing in this room, I know I'm surrounded by so many incredible scholars who hold formal and informal leadership roles here on campus, in their workplaces, and in other parts of the community. I would like to encourage you to look into those roles today and to, through a spirit of mentorship, not only strive for personal excellence, but encourage all of those around you to pursue excellence in their lives as well. So first, let's talk about how I know that all of you are such incredible leaders. There's a book out there, it's called uh, Leadership Lessons from a UPS Driver, and it was written by a man by the name of Ron Wallace. And he started working for UPS as a truck driver, and over the course of very many years, he rose through the ranks of the company to eventually become president of UPS International and he manages their operations in 220 countries and territories. So this could be accurately described as a meteoric rise, right? And he wrote this book and filled it with all of the lessons that he learned about leadership along the way. And so the first, and I would argue, the most important lesson to be learned from his story is that all positions include leadership. So of course, being president of UPS International was the destination of his career journey, but along the way he held positions that are very similar to roles that you and I will and have navigated in our lifetimes. See, the key to stepping into the roles of leadership in our lives is simply being cognizant of our successes. And what do I mean by that? So um, as human beings, we're very good at recognizing conventional leadership roles, so parents or managers, or faculty members leading a research team. But how often do we consider ourselves to be leaders when we do something as simple as successfully pass a difficult class, or get internship or shadowing opportunities that are applicable to our career goals? See, if ever we find ourselves in a position of success, 
we are in a unique opportunity to magnify that success. We all have the potential to be leaders. So I would like to conduct an interesting exercise with you all today. I would like for you to think of a time in which you were truly um, excellent, in which you worked for something, strove for that thing, and you were successful in it, and you were proud every time you think about it. I would like you to bring it to your mind's eye, and then I would like you to repeat this phrase in your head with me. So my name is, and fill in the blank here, I successfully accomplished or completed or excelled in, and fill in the blank with your activity or accomplishment, and I am now a leader. And the important word to emphasize is potential. So we all have the potential to be leaders once we become cognizant of our successes. Because simply having a position of influence over a person or a group of persons does not make a person a leader. But how they manage that influence does. So I would like to share three things that I think are indicative of good leadership. The first is that a good leader invests in their team members. So they take time to learn their team members' strengths and weaknesses. The second is that a good, team or a good leader takes time to um, believe in the members of their team and, and encourage the members of the team to believe in themselves as well. And a good leader also is self-reflective, meaning that they're willing to look inside themselves for the solution to a problem before they look for the solution in others. So of course there are other um, things that are indicative of good leadership. These are just three that have been particularly well exemplified by the leaders I have had the pleasure to know. But I also found that no matter how many traits of leadership I found and I listed, they all seem to have one common foundational theme. And that theme is mentorship. See, investing time in the members of your team, believing in them and encouraging them to do the same, and being a good example of taking responsibility for your actions are all examples of leadership, but it's important to note that they are all actions of mentorship. Mentorship is very simply the action of continuously and reliably seizing the opportunity to exemplify good leadership. And a commitment to leadership would not be complete without an even more fundamental commitment to mentorship. So a good example of this is I'm a member of an organization here on campus um, called Honors Medical Scholar Society. And they so believe in this mentor-mentee model that every incoming freshman in the organization is paired with a sophomore whom they can directly relate to for advice. So the sophomore who I was paired with when I was a freshman is Chelsea Grant. Now, Chelsea is an incredible example of everything that I've just discussed because she took time immediately upon getting to know me to know everything about how I think and how I act so that every time she speaks into my life, I know that she's actually talking about me um, and my situation and I can directly apply it to my circumstance. And she believes in me so much that I always want to be around her because that's the time in which I believe in myself the most. And not only that, she's such a good example of somebody who can look past their circumstance and work hard for everything that they want that I had no choice but to do the same and follow in her footsteps. And so long story short, she's about to step into her second year of medical school at Florida State University College of Medicine, and I will be joining her in May as a first year medical student. And a lot of the things, thank you, <laughs> thank you. And a lot of the things that I've accomplished as an undergraduate student here at Florida State University simply would not have been possible without her recognizing her role as a leader in my life and stepping into that spirit of mentorship. But beyond you know, the, uh, the cute stories and the even cuter pictures, or at least I think so, <laughs> um, there are, are facts, you know, hard facts, statistical evidence, empirical evidence, which show that mentorship can add value that transforms a mindset or a skill. And the number of studies which have been produced that point to the value of mentorship are so numerous that you know, it would take a TED Talk all on its own to talk about them. But I would like to talk about one specifically that was published in the International Journal for the, Pro for the Scholarship of Teaching and Learning. 
and it was appropriately titled Mentorship as a Value Proposition, or MVP. So this study looked at things a little differently. It said there's a lot of students in secondary institutions, colleges and universities all over the country who are learning incredible skills, gaining incredible knowledge, but they're going to the real world, if you will, um, into the workforce, and they're not being able to directly apply these skills. What may be the missing link, and might it be mentorship? And so they went into these institutions. They found a variety of students in a variety of different um, uh, capacities studying different things, and they asked them, what is your relationship like with your faculty member advisor? Is it a really close relationship? Do they pour um, advice into your life in different aspects of your life? Or is it just you come in, you get your work done, and you leave? And what they were looking for is whether or not the mentor or the, the student was forming what they called a mentoring third space. And this is a revolutionary concept. So this is how they described it in the article. Um, it's a Venn diagram type of situation where the mentor is one circle and the mentee is another. And the space, or if there is a space in which they connect, is the mentoring third space. And the degree to which they interact is the degree to which, and I'm quoting um, the article here, the mentor and the mentee engage in a relationship pedagogy to explore new regions of knowledge. That is professional knowledge and self-knowledge. So in other words, the students were making connections. They were learning more about the material, but importantly, they were learning more about themselves. And they were able to connect those two things in a way that cemented their understanding of the material and allowed them to apply it to the real world. And mentorship added that value. So really, every time we find ourselves in a position of leadership and we choose not to step into a spirit of mentorship, we're really holding back such an incredible gift. And I know that we've been told by so many well-meaning people that we should just strive for our own personal excellence and sprint to the finish line. And we can blame it on the individualistic leanings of our Western culture um, and the ideas that are spread that you shouldn't you know, do anything for people who aren't doing things for you or that you should just kind of have your own back to the top. But I believe that these ideas are toxic and they're hurting us because Along our journey to success, we're missing out on our joy, and joy is what's really most important. So now we're getting to the fun part of my talk, um, because I'm about to give you guys actionable steps that you can take to step into spirits of mentorship in your lives in places where you were a leader. So go back to that place where I asked you to label yourself as a leader, somewhere where you excelled, somewhere where you did something that you are proud of. Um, so think about that again. Bring it to your mind's eye. And now I would like you to think, was there any time during that journey where you struggled, where things were a little bit difficult and the going got a little bit rough? And during that time, was there ever something that a person could have done, a word of advice or encouragement or an act of kindness? Or perhaps could somebody have created a mentoring third space with you which would have allowed you to understand more about yourself and the world? Think about what that thing might have been that you could have really benefited from. And now, I would love for you to challenge yourself to find somebody who's in that position right now and to be that person for them. And, and write it down anywhere you need to, put it in your phone, put it on sticky notes and stick them on your mirror, anything you need to do until you get it done and then set a new goal. Because too often we consider our human experience to be more unique than it really is. But the chances are, if you could have used that help all that time ago, then somebody needs it right now. So let us be movers, let's be shakers, let's be revolutionaries, let's be warriors who are willing to rewrite the harmful narrative that may have hurt us in the past. Let us strive for personal excellence, please do, but in all things, let's be outwardly focused so that our momentum carries not only ourselves forward, but all of those who are around us as well. My parents, who are incredible leaders and mentors in my own life, always inspired me with this particular quote, success is not true success without a successor. And the older I get, the more I realize that nothing could be more true. So let us be bright lights 
And sure, let's shine as bright as we can, but let us also help ignite the flames of others as we go, so that when we have walked our path and it has taken us to many far and exciting places, we can look back and we can look up and we'll not only have our own light to marvel upon, but the lights of others who we perhaps lit for the very first time, or provided a little extra fuel for, or helped shelter from a particularly extinguishing blast of wind, and then perhaps our legacy will look a little less like a lantern and a little more like a galaxy. Thank you.